This video describes the Johnson family of probability distributions. They've been added to Stack Graphics 19. The Johnson family of distributions is capable of matching any combination of mean, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis. They're excellent for modeling a sample of univariate data when a simpler distribution won't fit. They may also be used for calculating critical values in tail areas and are very useful for generating random numbers if you're doing a Monte Carlo simulation. There are three types of Johnson distributions. The SB bounded distributions, the SU unbounded distributions, and the SL log normal distributions. The bounded distributions are appropriate when x varies over a fixed interval, theta to theta plus sigma. The SB distribution has four parameters, location parameter theta, the scale parameter sigma, and two shape parameters, gamma and delta. The unbounded distributions are appropriate when x can take any real value. They have the same four parameters as the SB distribution. And finally, the log normal distributions SL are appropriate when X is greater than some value theta. The SL distributions have only three parameters, the location parameter theta and two shape parameters gamma and delta. This graph shows the space of possible combinations of skewness and kurtosis. It turns out that the three types of Johnson distributions are appropriate for various regions on this graph. The unbounded distributions, SU, are appropriate whenever this skewness and kurtosis fall of the blue line. The SB distributions are appropriate when the skewness kurtosis combination is somewhere between the blue line and the red line. For combinations of skewness and kurtosis that fall exactly on the blue line, the SL distribution is used. Incidentally, combinations of skewness and kurtosis below the red line are impossible. I'm now in Stack Graphics 19, and I've loaded into the data sheet a sample of 100 measurements of resistivity of electronic components. In a moment, I'm going to fit a Johnson distribution to these 100 data values. Before I do that, though, I'm going to go to Statlets and take a quick look at that data using an interactive histogram. I'll give it the column containing the resistivity values. You notice that it's made a frequency histogram. It also shows the mean and standard deviation of those 100 values. As I think you can see, the data are not normally distributed. They're definitely skewed in the positive direction. To get an idea of what shape distribution would be appropriate, I'm going to go up to the toolbar here and add a non-parametric density estimate to the plot. And if I bring the smoothing window down a little bit, you see an obviously positively skewed distribution. Now let's go ahead and fit the distribution. Let's go to the top menu to describe distribution fitting fitting uncensored data. I'll give it resistivity. And when the analysis options dialog box comes up, instead of fitting a normal distribution, I'll ask it to fit a Johnson distribution. I'll then press OK, take the default tables and graphs, and you can see down here that it's fit a Johnson distribution to the data 
with the shape that we would have expected given the non-parametric estimate. Pretty good fit to that data. To see the details of the Johnson distribution, I'll come back to the analysis summary. And you can see in the upper left table here that it fit ASB distribution. The first thing the procedure actually does is decide which of those three types of Johnson distribution should be fit and then goes and estimates the parameters. The SB distribution here had a location parameter, a scale parameter, and also two shape parameters. I should also check the goodness of fit test to see how well this Johnson distribution fit my data. By default, it gave me a Magorov Smirnoff test. I can ask for other goodness of fit tests as well. For example, some people would prefer an Anderson Darling test. In each case, there's a p value, and a large p value corresponds to an adequate fit. In fact, the p value for the Johnson distribution on the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test is very large. It fits extremely well. As far as the Anderson Darling test, we don't have an exact p value, but it's greater or equal to 10%, again, suggesting that Johnson distribution did a good fit for this data. I now have a model for resistivity that I could use in other procedures. For example, if I needed to simulate some values of resistivity in a Monte Carlo simulation, I could generate random numbers from the fitted distribution. Or I could use this fitted distribution to calculate capability indices if I had specifications from process generating these electronic components. In summary, the Johnson distribution is very flexible. It can match any data sets, mean, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis.